Alan Frank and uh, Asif for speaking to Arabian Racial and Security Review. Uh, we would like to start with a brief about the OT security threat landscape. Um, how, you must have observed that over the past uh, couple of months. How has that evolved over the past couple of months? So, for the lack of a it has been a very active market and uh, it's a very absolutely a strategic market for Fortinet. And we can see, for me, I'm taking care of Middle East and Turkey as a region, and we can see a lot of activities so on different verticals and uh, mainly oil and gas, utility, transportation. And for that to sustain the, uh, the need of the market, so we are building a full dedicated team on this OT market to make sure we'll be there to be with our customers because it's a very strategic network. It's very high sensitive networks when we have to be very strong. So in terms of technology, we're investing a lot. Maybe as if we can give sure. more information on that. So thanks, Chris. Uh, as Alan highlighted, like from the business side, yes, OT is a focus and because that ties to the threat landscape even. So for example, if you see in the report, uh, we have disclosed a lot of statistics about what's happening in the threat landscape. And it's an you know, uh, ever-evolving threat landscape. We call that as ever-changing, ever-evolving. These are the words we use for the threat, threat landscape. Now, what's happening in the threat landscape, we are seeing new things that we haven't seen in the past that's happening for the OT, let's say, security-related uh, issues. Uh, we had seen uh, internal intrusions before. Now we are seeing external intrusions like remote access exploits, ransomware, and many other things, uh, which is evident in our report itself. When it comes to security loopholes, what do you think are the major reasons for uh, for it? Uh, so to be able to uh, to support the demand and support our customers, so we'll be the full ecosystem. So for sure, in terms of partner system integrator, very big SI, but in terms of technology, we are absolutely focused on that. And uh, we want to have dedicated resources on this uh, environment. So I just would like to add something on that. I won't really refer them as loopholes. Uh, I would refer them as you know security gaps and uh, let's say uh, uh, security issues, or you may you may call them as uh, uh, you know things that were not done in the past for OT cybersecurity. So there are two dif distinct things when it comes to OT cybersecurity in OT. One is the OT itself, operational technology. Uh, that's automation and industrial control system. That's what we are referring here. And then there is the OT security dimension to it. So I, I won't refer them as loopholes when applying OT security to the OT operational systems. It's more to fill the gaps. So there are security gaps and lapses. And it's evident because those systems were not designed security in mind. So you would see them as a loopholes. You would see them as, OK, there is something missing there, uh, for example, in terms of security implementation. So uh, yes, uh, those systems were initially not designed. Uh, some new requirements are coming in from internal organization risk management perspective. Uh, likewise, there are regulations coming in to talk to the customers, to talk to the OT asset owners and operators, what they should be doing for uh, OT cybersecurity, for example. So it's a broader discussion. Uh, uh, we have highlighted some best practices in the conclusion section of the report. Uh, I would call them start focusing on cyber hygiene to avoid these gaps, uh, lapses basically, and then fill those gaps uh, with security implementation. So if you were to talk about opportunities for your channel partners and your, the key stakeholders when it comes to OT security, what would that be? This is an extreme opportunity for our channel partners. So we have been doing business, uh, and Alan can highlight that, for the enterprise sector, for the cloud sector. And now OT is becoming uh, one of the key uh, enabler uh, to, to, let's say, uh, connect to these technologies. So we call them uh, as OT converged systems. In general, we call it IT-OT convergence, and so many things comes into picture when you discuss about, let's say, what is the opportunity for Fortinet, for our channel partner, even for customers to improve their security posture, for example. Uh, I would basically rather uh, you know, ask Alan to expose what's happening on field here in terms of our channel partners, uh, OT speciality, uh, likewise, what's happening with the customer as well? Yeah, that's a question. Yes. yes, absolutely. This is uh, so we 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 need as well to be with our partners. So uh, internally, so for sure, uh, we are focused on IT, IT, OT, telcos, so different segments uh, within the market, on FSI, government, etc. And OT is a specific vertical. And to make sure that we have the right partner landscape with us, and to make sure that the right skills, so we have specific training, certification, and we are very deep on the OT certification because. Again, critical infrastructure, so we have to make sure that our ecosystem, our partners are strong on this technology. Our channel partners have been you know, dealing with those same customers, but from a different lens. Uh, that lens was more enterprise and IT security and cloud and all those things. Uh, now those companies, when they are moving to migrate their IT system uh, and connect them to the OT side, or let's say connect the OT systems to the cloud and you know, other side of the network, 
Uh, eventually, it's an opportunity for us to basically adapt to that changing environment and then align our partners to sell OT as well. And we have specialized tracks, as Alan highlighted, uh, to train our partners uh, to talk the OT language, likewise to you know, train their staff how OT security really works, because there are two different things, IT security and OT security. So it's a two different dimensions. So we are working on that as well. We have launched several training uh, platforms uh, for training our internal staff as well as customers and our channel partners as well. So when you speak to your channel partners and customers, uh, you know, for feedback on the services that you provide, um, do you think that C-level executives understand the importance of securing OT infrastructure and what is uh, lacking in terms of accepting or adapting new technologies to you know, keep themselves safe from evolving uh, threats? Yeah, if you see the report, uh, uh, we have seen the awareness in the C-level and board for OT security, but it's not there yet, for example. Uh, in, in what, what I mean by it's not there yet, so there are two things here. So there is accountability and responsibility. So responsibility of OT security still lies with the OT operational teams and you know, OT automation engineers and operation managers. And sometimes they are also given the accountability. So they should not be accountable for that. Yes, they should be responsible. The accountability should lie with the board and C-level, as is the case, let's say, with the enterprise security. So if there is a big uh, data leak happen, for example, or there is a big intrusion happen, who is responsible? Who should uh, you know, release uh, a statement to the media? It's typically the, the chief risk officer, chief media officer, and all those things. So what's happening here, for example, in the OT security case, uh, if anything goes wrong in the OT, so OT team is responsible as well as accountable for that. So that gap we are still seeing, uh, it's becoming more and more mature, uh, specifically into the critical infrastructure, is becoming more of a discussion in the board level as well right now. Uh, because that critical infrastructure exposure uh, can compromise human safety, for example. Can even compromise uh, you know, smart cities, smart infrastructures even. So it has a bigger uh, role to play here in terms of the C-level discussion as well as in terms of what they should be looking at securing the OT infrastructure with the same lens as they look to secure the IT side of the infrastructure as well. And maybe Alan can highlight because Alan has been into the various discussions with the C-level executives and he will basically expose his experience from business point of view. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely right because uh, I was saying ourselves, so it's a very critical infrastructure and, and uh, uh, we believe and what we can see now in the field uh, X, uh, XSO, CIO, CISO, and uh, uh, CEO now understand exactly the risk on the market of the, the threats. And we can see as well, we are talking at the, at the senior level to identify what are the risk and how we can make sure we'll be able to manage collectively because security is not one, one single company, it's an organization with a company, partners and those. Collectively, we can be able to, to manage this risk. And we can see on the market deep discussion on that direction with, uh, uh, with our customers. What kind of importance has been placed on uh, zero trust framework because that has been a hot topic over the past couple of years and many companies actually stand by it. So when you talk about uh, zero trust framework, do companies understand what it is all about? How do they need to uh, evolve their existing technologies in place? Yes, so zero trust is not something new. It's a military concept and defense concept coming from that background and uh, the term recently came into the picture for technological implementation and more it to the IT side and enterprise and all that. And it's becoming growing on the OT side as well. And zero trust is a concept and there are several things to that, for example. So uh, for example, you will have zero trust access, zero trust network access and many other things. And when it comes to the OT, uh, it's going to be challenging to implement zero trust as is as we implement in IT because OT systems are designed more from reliability, efficiency and safety in mind and zero trust could hamper those things. So uh, there is a different, uh, you know, let's say implementation mechanism and some strategy we need to follow for zero trust, but eventually it will come in. For example, uh, what is zero trust? Zero trust is not trusting the people you already trust. Uh, or it's, it's, it's more to the people, both the dimensions. So you don't trust the people, you don't trust the uh, privileged staff as well, for example. And it applies to from beyond people. So it applies to services as well, it applies to data as well. So broadly, let's say people process technology, all these three different pillars will have a zero trust implementation, whether it's in IT or OT. And let's say, I'll give an example from zero trust point of view. So if a privileged user is trying to you know, access some engineering system or operating system, how the implementation, security implementation should differ, is it a genuine user? Uh, should the user should, uh, have access to the engineering system or not? Should the user have access to the operator system or not? 
So establishing this whole criteria and validation is part of the zero trust framework. And as 14.8, uh, we are uh, you know, spending uh, or investing so much on improving our technologies towards zero trust, and we already have several solutions uh, that can you know, easily be deployed in OT with you know, precaution and several other things uh, you know, considered. Uh, for example, uh, network access control is one of the solutions, and this solution can be utilized in both the side of you know, IT and OT, but the implementation is, is different for OT than IT, for example. Uh, so we spoke about opportunities when it comes to OT security for your channel partners. Uh, what's in it for Fortinet? Yeah, surely. So Fortinet has a you know, uh, you know, very broad role to play here. Uh, for, you know, OT security is one of the key imperative uh, in, in internally with the C-level for us as well. And if you look at from the broad portfolio, we have, we, we have moved from products and solutions to a platform approach. So it's a more broader platform, we call it security fabric. And this security fabric platform has different solutions and products built into it. And we are the one only key player in the market that has the full end-to-end -end solution to secure OT, ICS, and even interconnected IT. And then from moving from OT to the cloud, for example, we typically call them as industrial IoT or IoT. So it's a full spectrum of solutions, and we are building, it's the same solutions that we use on the enterprise side and cloud, however, they are adopted to OT security specific requirements. We are bringing in, bringing in more features uh, that will bring OT focus into these products, and this is where our direction is, to, to offer end-to-end -end security platform. And recently, I can you know, uh, supplement something more into it, is, is that we have done an analyst survey recently, and we are the only vendor that has full platform end-to-end -end available for our customer to secure their implementations. And if, I, if you allow me as well, as well in our strategy, we have this technology, could be on organized product, could be built-in, could be VM. Okay, so that's, that means giving customers the choice what do they want. Uh, thank you, Asif and uh, Alain, for speaking to us. Uh, nice speaking to both of you, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you in the future as well. Thank you, thank you Chris. Thank you, thank you very much.